Eu moro na roça, ia, ia. Eu nunca morei na cidade Eu compro o jornal da manhã Que é pra saber das novidades Many of those people who are there have been a teacher before, you know They, unfortunately, they are making less money They are like lay off from works because they don't have work for them to do Eu moro na roça, ia, ia. Although Brazil is a country with many resources, the vast majority of land and wealth belongs to a relatively small number of very rich people. While this is true for most countries, Brazil has the world's second most unequal distribution of wealth. More than two-thirds of the arable land is owned by only 3% of the population. Most people in Brazil are poor and landless. Most of the Brazilian countryside is made up of productive farms and ranches, but there are also many parcels of land that have been long neglected by their owners. This once was a ranch house of a large cacao plantation. When a disease ruined the productivity of these cacao trees, the landowners moved to the city. No one has lived here for decades and the land has sat unproductive for the whole time. The 300 hectares of land belonging to this absentee landowner fills the Sonatel living in the Jacaranda encampment with hope. Their request to be awarded some of this land is presented to the government through the MTR, a movement of rural workers. Our government's decision to liberate the land because they are not just getting the land for free. You know, the, the government's come and he buy the land for a much cheaper price for the farmer and then it's become to the government and the farm is out of the picture so the government can come and share those acres with all the same time. Clara Cesario Silva is a professor of anthropology at Saddleback College. She has worked extensively with the Semtea in the state of Bahia. Probably my most memorable experience is this last year when I was there doing work with them and was able to actually follow a group from trying to get land, so living on the side of the road, trying to get the government to give them land, to actually winning and getting the land. So the whole sense of, you know, euphoria when they actually won something and they had put, they had been camping for over five years, and then to actually have this, to be a part of their success, and for them to actually consider me a part of their success was really an exciting thing. Of course, the other side of this story is that of the landowners, who, not too surprisingly, have not exactly embraced the idea of the government taking away their property and giving it out to the Semteja. Landowners that don't want their land taken away from them um, will <coughs> attack you know, groups of Semtejas or marches of Semtejas. April 17, 1996, is known throughout Brazil as the day of the infamous massacre at El Dorado dos Carajás. During a peaceful march on the capital in the northeastern state of Pará, a large group of centeas were fired upon by military police, with 19 people killed and many more injured. The brutal event was captured on videotape and the footage was aired on national television to a shocked Brazilian populace. This was an enormous wake-up call to the majority of Brazilians, whose awareness of their country had previously extended only between the cities and the beaches, and it galvanized support for the Semteas nationwide. On the one-year anniversary of the massacre, a march on the national capital, Brasilia, brought over a million supporters from cities and the Semteja encampments alike. These were people that were just on a march, trying to go from to the capital um, to to demonstrate and ask the government to release some of the land, and they were just shot down in cold blood. Changes in public sentiment toward the poor in general, and the Semtea in particular, have resulted in a real change in Brazilian politics. In 2002, Luis Inácio da Silva, also known as Lula, became Brazil's first leader who was born into the working class. Lula's successful run at the presidency in 2002, after two unsuccessful campaigns, was partly due to the support for his political party coming from the Semtea movement. Although the Brazilian government under Lula has greatly increased the number of land awards, the living conditions for the Semtea remain the same. Imagine having a temporary, makeshift shelter be your permanent home, sometimes for years on end. 
Why do they use black plastic sheeting for the houses? Because it's the cheapest thing you can find. It. They use plastic because uh, it's a cheap thing, you know, and they um, they prevent for against the rain, you know, but they not prevent against snake get in. And remember, they are by the side of the freeway, so if there is a car pass by, you know, and somebody, you know, by bad intentionally, you know, decide to throw something like cigarette or something, they that they will catch fire like this, you know. So they put their lives, you know. That's the last hope they have. Man, they have so many beautiful people out there, you know. I mean, we have now 300 friends out there. While it may seem like land redistribution is all you need in order to make things right, as we look deeper, we see that the situation is incredibly complex. Not all Semtas who win land from the government settle into happy endings. Particularly in the tropical northeast and in the Amazon, many will abandon the land that they were awarded and some will go back into the Semteha encampments. The primary reason why you find that is because while the government has been giving land to people, particularly um, before Lula came into office, the current president came into office, they weren't giving anything else but the land. So they put people on land, but all the other things that were supposed to go along with it, which are credits to build houses and credits to buy, seeds and to do different things because most of these people have no money so you get land but you need to then have money to be able to do something with that land so the government would give them the land nothing else and so they'd still be starving they still wouldn't be able to survive and so after a few years some people you know if they didn't have the skills to be able to farm or they didn't have resources from relatives or friends they would just leave and find work. The ideals of the Semtea movement go beyond just giving neglected and unproductive land to poor farmers. Semtea leaders are adamant that a total transformation of civilized society is needed in order for land reform to work. For example, in the rules of the Semtea organizations, all of the communities of settled Semtea must operate to some degree as a cooperative, in which the families all pitch in with the work, and the proceeds from that work get divided up among the families. This ideal of an economic cooperative shows clearly the Marxist philosophy at the root of the Semtea movement, and it's difficult to see how land reform could take place at all without the far-left way of thinking. To date, well over 600,000 Semtea families have been settled onto land expropriated from the absentee landowners. But after 30 years of the Semtea movement, it also seems like things are just really getting started. There's such a high unemployment rate. There's so much land in Brazil and so many people who don't have jobs that you put the two together and it can solve a lot of the problems in, that they're having in Brazil. So I see it definitely growing and becoming an, a very important factor. I think agrarian reform where land gets redistributed so that it's not just concentrated in the hands of a few people but is spread out so that a lot of people have land is really the future for the social problems of Brazil and the economy of Brazil. As a country, Brazil is the study in contrast and conflicts, especially between the wealthy and the poor. The enormous inequality between the poor and the rich in Brazil is at the core of many of the country's social problems, poverty, crime, and corruption. Compromise is written into the Brazilian constitution, where it says that land has to be used in a way that is productive for all the country. This leads to the Semtea movement, which pressures the government to expropriate neglected land and give it to the landless workers. This does not solve all problems, and at times it creates new ones. Still, it seems like an appropriate way to address the foundations of Brazil's deepest problems. What was it like living in a Semtea encampment? It was fun. There were a few things I disliked, but overall, I really liked it. What would be the hardest part for you if you lived as a Semtea in this encampment? The bugs. I definitely did not like the bugs. They you had to itch at them all the time. Uh, if you want to bring to your class, I'll be delighted to go over there. We can do some Brazilian barbecue, and that's it, babe. Thank you.